We've got a good idea of what accountability sounds like, but what should accountability look like for the New Orleans Saints? We got all that and a little bit of land yet for you on today's episode of Locked on Saints. You are Locked on Saints, your daily New Orleans Saints podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. What is good, Houdat Nation and Houdat family? Welcome in to another episode of Locked on Saints, your daily podcast covering your favorite team, the New Orleans Saints, part of Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks so much, as always, to all you everydayers out there making Locked on Saints your first listen of the day every day. Don't forget, you can always subscribe and follow for free on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts so you never miss the latest episodes. And if you want to keep the conversation going, take part in our exclusive film studies, breaking news, Q&As, and much more, you can become a Locked on Saints insider by heading over to joinsubtext.com slash Locked on Saints today to join a community I would love for you to be a part of. As always, I am your host, Ross Jackson, at Ross Jackson Nola on your favorite social media, your New Orleans Saints expert, credential member of the media, Saints News Network, Tuesdays on the Locked on NFL podcast, and here with you every single Monday through Friday, on Locked on Saints. And today's episode of Locked on Saints is brought to you by our friends at Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use that promo code Locked on NFL for $20 off of your first order, last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. On today's episode of Locked on Saints, we're going to be taking a look at the timeline for New Orleans. Is it too late to turn things around? We're also going to be taking a look at the last four plays of the game, the loss to the Houston Texans what went wrong, and maybe a shorter list of, well, we're not even going to go into what went right because we need to look at what went wrong so the New Orleans Saints know what to fix. But to get things started here, I want to talk a little bit about accountability. We spoke together Monday, or rather Sunday night, going into Monday, uh, looking at the Saints' loss. And one of the things that we talked about was how much you hear about accountability, right? It's our fault. It starts with me. I've got to be better. We've got to be better. We've got to get this fixed. You've heard all of it, but you're not seeing the results. So it's great to hear accountability. It's an entirely different thing to see accountability. We need to watch accountability turn into action, which will then lead to improvement. That's kind of the map that we drew. So what does that end up actually looking like? How do you achieve that? So I brought some ideas in terms of how I think these things can lead to an improved New Orleans Saints team. Will it? I don't know. But could it? Yes. And would it be better than what we're seeing so far on the offensive side in particular? I think it can be. So let's start off with coaching. Um, It's great to hear all of the accountability. We got to be better. I have to be better. It starts with me. Uh, We got to get this fixed. All those things that we just quoted a moment ago. But If you can't get players prepared to be out there on the field to know what it is that they're doing, there's two conversations to be had. There's the conversation of the, actually three conversations. There's a conversation of the miscommunication. Where is the breakdown in the chain of communication that's leading to some of the confusion that we see? There is the get with it on the playbook side, which is surprising to see here in October. Uh, But I'll tell you why. It might be surprising, but not necessarily out of the ordinary for what we've seen for this New Orleans Saints offense, not just this season, but last season as well. And then the last piece is the the preparation, which the coaches have full control over. Get players ready starting on Wednesday so that they're ready by the time that they get to game day. That's assuming a, a Sunday game, of course. And then the next piece is after you successfully get players ready, put them in position to excel. The New Orleans Saints had eight red zone attempts, eight red zone snaps against the Houston Texans this past week. And Jimmy Graham was on the field for two of those, both of which run plays. Now, if you know anything about Jimmy Graham, you know that he is six foot seven, used to play basketball, and can make some big catches in the red zone. It was a big part of what we saw during, you say, the, the preseason, right? The big preseason touchdown that he had at home. We even saw it against the Green Bay Packers, the one real time we've seen Jimmy Graham targeted in the red zone so far this season. Why is he not on the field? And when he is on the field, why is he on the field for run plays as opposed to his opportunities to pass? Because if you think you're fooling somebody, oh, Jimmy Graham's on the field, so the defense must believe that we're going to throw the ball, so let's run it. 
they they know <laughs> they've watched the tape from the rest of this week or from the rest of this year. You haven't set a precedent. You haven't set a um, tendency that he's on the field for passing plays. So why would anyone believe otherwise? Michael Thomas so far has run 13 slants this season, 17 digs. Now, I will be the first one to tell you that Michael Thomas does a lot more than just run slants, a lot more than just run those short routes in the short area of the field. He's somebody that can get downfield, somebody that can have a big impact in the intermediate area as well. We've seen that a lot so far this season, particularly his impact in the intermediate area. But why is he not being utilized to help you move the ball downfield? Why is he not being utilized when you've got 24 yards and a timeout in between where you are and where the end zone is in a score to tie or potentially score and two point conversion to win situation? Seems pretty simple to me. Lastly, Chris Olave, only 10 over routes so far this season. Now he's running all of his usual things, right? He runs the goes to get downfield. He runs the digs. He runs the the outs, he runs the uh, the hitches, the things that he runs really well, those comeback routes, stuff like that. Hard, rarely targeted on those hitches, but he runs those still. Those were the things that he created. Those are the routes that you know he used. He created the most separation with last season, all of those things. But the over route, giving him the opportunity to showcase, to showcase his speed and run away from a defender missing from the play calls. And this is another example of players not being utilized to attack the middle of the field even though there's, they have the absolute capability to attack the middle of the field. Outbreaking routes for Chris Olave, goes, corners, out routes, hitches, uh, all of those being outright far outweigh what you see from the inbreaking routes of things like digs, overs, posts, and slants. That cannot possibly make sense. That cannot possibly make sense. One of your best players when it comes to attacking the middle of the field is not being utilized to attack the middle of the field. Oh, by the way, same thing for Michael Thomas. Michael Thomas rarely being used to attack the middle of the field in rel- or in, in comparison or relative to the amount of time that he's being asked to attack the outside of the field. The Saints are playing so much outside the numbers that they're losing what is usually their bread and butter, and certainly the bread and butter of a quarterback like Derek Carr who loves to target the middle of the field. Okay, so those are coaching decisions, play call, play design, things like that. Things that happen before the play calls even begin to get made. Let's not leave the players out of this because when it comes to skill position players, you have to understand your assignments and be ready to execute, especially in pivotal moments. There's no reason that Chris Olave on a first and 10 should be lining up on the outside with his hands in the air, not knowing what's going on. It's unacceptable. And that's not specifically on Chris Olave. That could be miscommunication. That could be Chris Olave. I don't know. I'm not in the huddle. But in any case, you have to be ready to execute. And everything that we heard from Olave, everything that we heard from Michael Thomas, everything we heard from Rashid Shahid was that the receivers were accepting responsibility for not necessarily being able to execute at their highest potential in this game. And it seems like miscommunication was a big part of that. So that brings me to Derek Carr. That brings me to the quarterback. You with timeouts in your pocket, cannot go out there and have a two, three players confused, not knowing what's going on, and then still run the play. And run the play at a frantic pace at that. This New Orleans Saints offense never looked settled in. When they did look settled in, they looked fantastic. The motion, play action, seam route that they hit to Foster Moreau, the, uh, the slant to Michael Thomas right after that, composure, calculation, confidence, all of the things that you wanted to see from this New Orleans Saints offense. But when it came to the most pivotal moments, red zone, third downs, money downs, all these other things, it looked like they were completely lost out on the field. And that comes back to the quarterback. That comes back to the head coach. That comes back to the offensive play caller. That comes back to the triumvirate of people that make every decision that happens offensively on your football field. That cannot be the case. You have to have a good grasp of what's going on around you. And that the players are absolutely ready to go. Someone has to be that person. And that's where I'm going to give Derek Carr a little bit more credit here. Although they failed to get their players collected, although they failed to get their players in position to win against the Houston Texans, and I mean coaching, quarterback, everybody in that case, I will respect Derek Carr's fire for coming off the field livid after the game. And he apologized for being mad, but I say don't apologize. I say he shouldn't have to apologize. 
because someone's got to have that fire. Somebody's got to have that sense of urgency that's ready to go out there and say, no, this is not an acceptable brand of football. And until somebody does that to an extent that actually challenges these players, you're going to continue to see the same product out on the field. And you need to challenge the coaches too, because it's not just on the player. I'm sorry. I understand that everybody wants to shift blame from play calling to execution, from execution to play calling. Everyone feels like you have to blame one thing at a time. Forget that. This is an offense that has no idea how to operate right now, especially in moments when it matters most. And that cannot be acceptable. And I don't mean to say that in a way that, you know, drives a dagger into somebody or anything like that, but you can see it from these players as well. If there's one thing, one thing that's consistent, you haven't seen a lot of consistency on the offensive side of the football, but if there's one thing that's consistent is that what's happening so far on offense is unacceptable. And eventually the accountability needs to go from three word, four word, five word phrases and into action, improvement, and wins. Are we going to see that? We'll find out. Let's take a look now at the last four plays of this game and why they were an absolute disaster. We got that coming up for you as we continue on with today's episode of Locked on Saints, your team, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. BetterHelp Therapy Online has been massively helpful to me. Have you ever gotten into sort of this rut to where you feel like your brain is getting in its own way? Uh, maybe like the Saints offense is getting in its own way and you want to clear up some of that, kind of get a better, clearer version of your existence. Well, that's why I go to therapy uh, because therapy helps me a ton. Think about it like going to the gym, but for your brain or going to the doctor, but for your brain, right? All of those kind of like intrusive thoughts, things like that, that you kind of want to clear up. You want to be able to have a very clear focus going into your life. Therapy has helped me do that a, a ton, especially at times where I am most in need. So I highly recommend if you've been waiting to try therapy, this better help is the way to go. It is entirely online, designed specifically to be convenient, to be flexible, and to be suited for your schedule. Uh, you get work with a licensed therapist. You can switch therapists at any time at no additional charge. It's fantastic. And you do it all from the convenience of your own home, video, uh, text chat, phone call, whatever it might be. Make your brain your friend today with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash locked on today to get 10% off of your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash locked on. Today's episode of Locked on Saints brought to you by our friends at DoorDash. I use DoorDash all the time. In fact, I've actually got an order on the way right now. Order from Slim Goodies Diner up in or down in Uptown. You know how it goes here. Uh, you know, they've got some other great local spots like Weed Ats. Uh, they've got great local spots like uh, like Verdi Mart as well, to where you want to get maybe that that roast beef on on uh, on French or whatever it is that you're into. They have all of that over on DoorDash. So if you're local here to New Orleans, you can support all of those local eateries, all the places, especially like Slim Goodies. It's got such a fantastic history as well in terms of what they did for their community during Katrina and everything, like lots of great stuff. So make sure you go and check out DoorDash today. Let me help you out. You're going to get 50% off up to a $10 value when you spend $15 or more on your first order. When you download the DoorDash app and enter the code LOCKED23, that's L O C K E D two. Three, subject to change, terms apply, but 50% off of your $10 value when you spend $15 or more on your first order. You download that DoorDash app, use the promo code LOCKED23. All right, family, continuing on with today's episode of Locked on Saints. Don't forget every Friday, NFL kickoff. You want to know what's going on around the rest of the NFL, where offense is also horrible, by the way. Like offense around the NFL is just bad, uh, regardless. You had Five teams this week that scored more than 21 points. Yike. So there's a lot going on around the NFL. You want to keep up with all of it? Go and check out Locked on NFL Kickoff. You can find it here on the Locked on Saints YouTube page, Locked on NFL's YouTube page, or any NFL channel's YouTube page as well, 2 p.m. Eastern time. All right, so I appreciate all you everydayers as always. Make it Locked on Saints your first listen of the day every day. We're taking a look after we finish with accountability. Let's now back it up a little bit. We're not going to spend too much time recapping the Houston Texans game. We all saw what happened. We all know what happened. And the uh, Jacksonville Jaguars game is literally two days from today. So there's we got to quickly get things turned over to previewing and looking at that game. But 
I think a part of understanding what went wrong against the Houston Texans will influence the New Orleans Saints going up against the Jacksonville Jaguars. And a game that they're almost assuredly to be unanimously selected to lose, by the way. So can they come out and get an upset? Hard to have any belief in that at this time, especially based on what we saw for the last four plays of the game. The last four plays of the New Orleans Saints versus Houston Texans game were some of the strangest, whether it be play calls or route running or whatever it might be, execution. It was all strange. Everything about it was weird. You're on the 24 yard line. You had a seven point deficit. You've got less than a minute left, I understand, but you've also got a timeout. You have the out of bounds areas. This is the first time I think this season that I've said, hey, use outside the numbers when you can and all that. But we just saw this team completely look like panic. And whether it was Pete Carmichael panicking from the play calling side of just run fast, right? Or if it was the players who, didn't really know what their assignment was because everything was so um, you know, sped up and everything was so frantic. You got to calm everybody down. I, I remember a moment where Alvin Kamara, I think it was during the same drive, gets a pass, fights his way, gets out of bounds to the left side, and then comes on the field kind of gesturing, like putting his palms down and pushing them down towards the ground as to say, like, settle down, calm down. Let's take our time. We've got time now. And even still, get back out on the field and then get into the huddle and everything just felt so frantic. And I think a part of that came to the offensive line, right? Like we're talking about Max Garcia, backup left guard playing. Uh, you've got uh, Cesar Reeves who had to bounce out the right tackle. Nick Saldaveria, a rookie, getting his first playing time. Uh, I understand that, that's a, that that is a factor in it for sure. And that did impact, I think it was the third play of the four plays that the Saints ran. But the fact of the matter is that for three of four plays, it felt like the Saints just ran all go special from 24 yards out there are different variations of you had you had a three by one where everybody just ran down the field you had a two by two where everybody just ran down the field and then you had a three by one where three people ran down the field and then one of the players on the inside of the three by one crossed over to the opposite side of the field to hit the landmark and the seam over on the left side and no attacking over the middle of the field no routes crossing when there were crossing routes earlier in the game it was a whole bunch of people crossing one another you had three people running mesh concepts as opposed to two all these other things so it it was all strange and it was strange from a lot of different places and uh, the the thing that i want to focus on is just like a, a couple little pieces so you you've got the the variation of the all goes for three to four of those plays you have Chris Olave looking confused. I believe it was on the first down snap. He's lined up on the bottom of the screen. He's got his hands in the air. The ball still gets snapped. There's still a timeout. Would burning that timeout have been annoying? Sure. But was taking four straight deep shots to the end zone because it seems like people didn't know what they were supposed to be doing more annoying or just as annoying? Sure. Absolutely. So you call the timeout. You, you get everybody settled down. You, you take the criticism of the timeout, sure, but that's much better than the, than the loss, right? If that gives you an opportunity to get in, calm down, and get collected, especially when you know, and this is the other thing, you know you've got 24 yards between yourself, the line of scrimmage, and the end zone. You have the timeout to burn. You're taking low percentage shots all the way down the field, not only in the end zone, but on the outside corners of the end zone, and then you're not really understanding your situation. It's third, there you go, it's first down got 24 yards, got a timeout. There's this much time left on the clock. The defense is bringing a ton of pressure. The offensive line is banged up. So we have to get the ball out quickly, start moving the ball down the field as best we can. And look at how much cushion you're being given, nearly 10 yards of cushion. And you know that they're sending extra players. You know that they're going to try to send six, try to send seven. This is a D'Amico Ryan's defense. They want to blitz. They want to come after you. So you have to be ready for those things and no adjustments that are being made there. Now, I understand that. It, 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 I think that there's a misconception, and, and, and uh, Deuce Windham talked about this on, on uh, social media the other day, that there's a misconception of how audibles work. It's not the Madden thing to where you, you hold you know, whatever and then you, you get to choose between four plays. That's not how audibles work in the NFL. You might, get to, you might get a check call in the huddle. You might not. So again, use the timeout. You have it. I understand that you would have gotten a lot of criticism for it, whatever. But you also finished the game with that timeout sitting there doing nothing and being in a situation to where you were completely operating from a place of non-calculation. 
You're operating from a place of like vibes and that's not going to win you football games. That's not going to happen at all. So it's already tough enough to beat an opponent in the NFL. Don't help them out by taking yourself out of the game. And I feel like that's what happened in the last four plays of that New Orleans Saints, Houston Texans game. The Texans, excuse me, the, the Saints took themselves out of the game. They took themselves out of competition by not being on the same page miscommunication, all these things. And you can narrow that down to the players. You can narrow that down to the coaches. My answer is yes. My answer is yes. There's a problem when it comes to the New Orleans Saints offense, and eventually something's got to get fixed. Is there time to get it fixed this season? That's the next big question. And that's what we're going to discuss next as we continue on and wrap up today's episode of Locked on Saints, part of Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode of Locked on Saints is brought to you by our friends at Game Time. Game Time is the only place that I will go when it comes to purchasing tickets for a couple of reasons. First of all, fantastic rates. They also have a low price. You have a whole guarantee as well. Their Game Time guarantee means that if you, you'll always get that best price because if you find tickets in the same section and the same row as the ones that you already bought from Game Time for less elsewhere, Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference. You can actually make money by finding uh, a better price elsewhere. They'll challenge you to do that because you're not going to find a better price anywhere than game time. And they give you a bunch of other little perks as well. Uh, Last minute tickets, last minute deals, flash sales, stuff like that. You can see a photo of the uh, of the event or the venue from where you're sitting so that there's no surprises when you show up. So I highly recommend that you download the Game Time app today, create an account, use the promo code Locked On NFL for $20 off of your first purchase. Terms apply. Download that app, create an account, redeem code L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N-N-F-L for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. Let's get it, Houdat Nation. Wrap it up today's episode of Locked on Saints. Trying to answer a simple question here. Is it too late for the New Orleans Saints to turn things around? Now, I know that this particular topic is going to be met with a lot of vitriol. I'm going to try to address everything that I can here as best as I can. But I do want to answer this question because I've been asked this question by a lot of Saints fans. And so I do want to give the respect of answering it. Appreciate everybody for being here and for making Locked on Saints your first listen of the day every day. Big shout out to all you everydayers for coming through. So I mentioned that this topic is going to be met with a lot of vitriol. And, and, and I think that it's because like, there's a lot of people that want, there's, there's a lot of people that want me to talk about this team one way. There's a lot of people that want me to talk about this team another way. I tend to try to serve both parts by being critical, but being pragmatic, right? Being realistic at the same time. And so I'm going to do my best to do that here. I think I've proven that I'll be critical about this team. But let me take a step back and look not at the team, look not necessarily at the problems in particular, but for just a moment, look at the calendar, look at the situation. Is there time for the New Orleans Saints to get things fixed, to turn things around? The answer to that question is simply yes. There is time. The Saints are three and three right now in in an awful division. We knew this team, we knew that this, that this division was going to be terrible. Um, it looked like at first, maybe it wouldn't be. Got you, psych, it's bad. Um, it's the only team in the, it's the only division in the NFL right now without a four-win team. Um, everybody's within a game of one another with the exception of the Carolina Panthers who are a hapless 0-6 and they're turning over play calling duties to another player, to another coach, which means they probably won't win another couple of games for the rest of the season, right? More than a couple of games for the rest of the season. So you have to look at just the situation here. Three and three, one half game behind the Tampa Bay Buccaneers who are at three and two. The Buccaneers right now are um, a half game ahead because they played one fewer game. Uh, You also have right now the likelihood that this team's going to drop to three and four this weekend, this week, right? Like Going up against the Jacksonville Jaguars, a team that I picked the Saints to lose to before the season began, I haven't seen a lot from this New Orleans Saints team, particularly the offensive side of the football. I think that the Jaguars offense versus the New Orleans Saints defense should be a lot of fun to watch. It just depends on how much that defense has to be out on the field and how much the New Orleans Saints offense can maybe string some things together. Uh, I, I understand not having a lot of faith in this team this weekend, but if they drop to three and four, even if that happens, and then the you have the, you know, the, the Carolina Panthers are basically out of the conversation at this point. 
but at least for now, unless they make some kind of miraculous turnaround. But even if they go on to a six game win streak, they'd be six and six at that point, 12 games through the season with only five left to go. So unlikely you're going to see much from them. But this weekend, the Falcons and the Bucks play one another. So you're kind of actually hoping, like, like you're not hoping for a Falcons win. I understand the, 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 why that's not the case. Uh, but a Falcons win would go further because it would knock the Bucks down to three and three. If the Saints are at three and four and then the uh, Falcons are at four and three, you'd rather have the Falcons ahead because that's easier to catch up as opposed to the Bucks who would go up to four and two if they beat the Falcons. So it just gets a little bit more complicated with them already having the bye week, playing one less game and therefore having lost one less game, and all these other things. But eventually, once everybody hits their bye week, like this division is going to even back out. And we're going to be talking about a New Orleans Saints team that's in the running probably for the entire season because this division is awful. And so is there time to turn things around? Absolutely. A hundred percent. Yes. Does it feel like they can turn things around is a different question. It's an entirely different question. And I don't want to be overly critical here, but I get that. I understand looking at this team and being like, they're not going to turn it around, right? You could say if the New Orleans Saints play calling gets better, if the New Orleans Saints execution gets better, if the communication gets better, if people understand sort of their roles and then you, know, you get rid of some of the confusion and things like that in terms of what they're supposed to be doing on a play-by-play -play basis, uh, if you can eliminate some of that, particularly and, and if you can eliminate kind of the, the, the frantic nature of key moments and things like that, then this team could win games. But also, if I had wheels, I'd be a car. Like, you can go through all the ifs in the world, but until you actually see them, then we can start talking about sort of the progress. We could start talking about the, the improvements there. So it's like we discussed earlier. You have to go from the, the conversation of accountability to the action of accountability, and then ideally the improvements that follow that. So is it too late for the Saints to turn things around? Absolutely not. We're six games into the, to a 17-game season, uh, and there's a lot going on. We're seeing you know, Trevor Lawrence dealing with injuries. We've got, you know, uh, Justin Jefferson's on injured reserve. Marcus Davenport's probably going to go to injured reserve here soon. Anthony Richardson, the Colts quarterback, might be shut down for the rest of the season. And Justin Fields is dealing with a thumb injury that's all about swelling and mobility. And when he can grip a football, is he going to be able to get that better by the time that the Saints meet the Chicago Bears? In two weeks, right? They've got the they've got the Jaguars this weekend. They've got who you know will or won't have Trevor Lawrence. Uh, I think that Trevor Lawrence is going to play, but you know, anyway, it's a it's a conversation. It's an injury thing. You're going to want to watch out for it. Uh, Anthony Richardson's not going to be available for the Colts the weekend after that. After that sort of mini buy where the Saints can make some real big tinkers and changes, I don't expect much to tinker and change this week. Um, they, they probably won't even have a full offensive line going into this week against the Jacksonville Jaguars. But when you've got 10 days from Thursday to Sunday, there's some chance to make some real big changes and improvements there. Can they get that done? If not, then bigger questions need to start being asked and answered at that point, right? Then after that, you've got the Chicago Bears at home who might or might not have Justin Fields. After that, you've got the Minnesota Vikings who you know might or might not have Justin Jefferson, who definitely won't have Marcus Davenport. So you're not going to get the revenge game narrative. Uh, there's just a lot that can go the Saints way if the Saints can go the right way, right? Everything around them can go the right way, but or everything around them can go their way. But if they're going the wrong way, they'll lose. If they're going the right way, they can win. And that's just kind of the nature of the NFL. That's the nature of the New Orleans Saints right now. They need, 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 must get these things fixed if they want to do anything. But again, it's got to go beyond the words. It's got to go into the action. It's got to be shown in the improvement. I appreciate y'all very much. Make it locked on Saints your first listen of the day every day. Again, I know it's tough right now, but we're here. We're still here every single day, getting it all done. And we'll be live again later on tonight after practice. Uh, we had an estimated injury report from last week, from, from Monday. Not going to worry about that. It's estimated. Doesn't matter. Let's take a look at it when they actually hit the field today. So we'll be live after practice. We're also speaking with coordinators today, all of that. So have a whole bunch coming up for you here on the Locked on Saints podcast that I appreciate you very much for making us a part of your day, a part of your routine for saying yes to me and the show. As always, if you see me, please say hi. And if you need anything else around your New Orleans Saints in between these episodes, make sure you follow me on your favorite social media at Ross Jackson, N-O-L-A. Hit me up. Let me know how the family's doing. Let me know how you're living. Let me know how you're mom and them. And trust you, that nation, I'll holla at you.